Welcome to yet another edition of the sparkling TV show from Talk Radio TV. It is, of course, Plank of the Week time. And I'm delighted to say, notwithstanding the last time they were together, they were terribly badly behaved. We have the beautiful Dawn Neeson on my right and the equally handsome uh, Christo Fufas on my left. Now, the last time you guys were together, uh, the show was incredibly kind of uh, double entendre, if you don't mind me saying so. So I'm hoping to have a bit more of a clean show tonight. But would you like to kick us off, Dawn, with your first I plank nomination? I would love to. Uh, mine, because it is a, a perennial plank in my book, um, Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, yes. Hugh a very Grant. good choice. He hasn't been on for a while, you know. No. Oh, I know. I'd, I'd like to sort of like, you know, seamlessly get him every week. Yes. But I mean, basically, a Nigel Farage, who we love, um, has launched a, a campaign for a net zero referendum. Mm. Along with Richard Tice, talk radio presenter. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes, it was on. I do. Have a bonus. <laughs> anyway, Hugh Grant doesn't think this is a good idea. Doesn't obviously. He? No, and he's oh, such a good part of What's he going to do with him? He's an actor. Mm. Mm. A, mm, not a good one. Yes. Anyway, so he actually put out on Twitter in response to this referendum. I'm not quite sure how the referendum would work in any case. I'm not saying right. I agree with that. But Hugh Grant actually put out to Nigel Farage on Twitter a very rude word, telling him to go pleasure himself, yeah. I mean, oh. not in such a nice way. Right. That's yeah. not very nice, No, is it's it? not very nice. It's no. not a nice person. Was it, was it no. a late at night sort of type tweet? I think it might have been. Mm. Any case, this is because Hugh Grant obviously is, a, is an eco-warrior, eco-campaigner. Is he? Uh, well, oh, so he doesn't mind flying around the world, filming in exotic locations, using up lots of electricity. Or... Or having, five, or having five children well, when overpopulation mm. is a big thing. Mm. Did he um, leave the engine running when he was with Divine Brown? Yes, or did he indeed, turn it off yeah, to save yeah. the CO2? Yeah, but it didn't take long of it. Well, anyway. well, do you know, apparently one of the reasons that uh, they were able to see what was going on in the car was that the engine was definitely on because the brake lights kept going on and off. And that's how the police knew. Yes. Mm. So that is very unenvironmentally un friendly. Very un I mean, not only has he got five children, including two women that were expecting at the same time, Oh, nice guy. Listen, just saying. So accidents happen. You know, you, you can't make him out to be a bad guy just because of that. Yes, I can, Mike. Okay. No, Loyalty accidents do happen, thing. hence Hugh Grant being around. Right. Well, yeah, quite, absolutely. <laughs> and because not only does he have five kids by several different women, he also drives a £240,000 Ferrari, one of only 800 ever uh, made, yes. gas guzzling to mm. the nth degree, 6.3 litre V12 Engine. That's quite a big car. That's quite a big car. That's is quite a big carbon footprint, mm. that, isn't it? Yeah. He's also got lots of houses. It's nowhere near net zero, that, is it? No, that, is it? he's not really... How no. much room is in the car? That's what I want to know, because... Well, I don't think you get Divine Brown in it, that's what well, sure. I was going to say. <laughs> I don't know why she he said to Farage as well, go F yourself, because clearly he's not used to doing that. <laughs> well, <don't> they, he <laughs> he has someone to do it for he him. He normally pays someone else to do <laughs> yes. it for him, yes. yes. I, guess. I, I once got into a Twitter spat with him. Do you remember when he did some kind of thing which he claimed was for charity, but he did this horrible thing that was sort of Paddington Bear-like. Oh. And I ended up saying that it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen. He then said to me at one point or other, well, you seem nice and pleasant. And I said, well, we both know that you are neither of those things. Good night. And that was the end. Oh. OK. Did he block you after that? I, I think, think he did, he yeah. You. I think he did. Not much of a spat, though, is it? I was a bit pathetic. Well, it went on for a while. I mean, I don't oh, want to give you the say, full version. Right, yeah. I, was, I edited it down. He didn't me. tell you to go and... He didn't, follow enough, no. yourself. He didn't, no. Or pay someone else to do it. No. At least he's an actor But now, I can tell though. you what he did used to do when oh. I worked in Scotland, and we used to quite frequently get phone calls from some of our friends in St Andrews. He had a habit of turning up in St Andrews, uh, unannounced, and popping into uh, parties that were being held by ah. undergraduates. Right. Even though he was a man in his sort of young mid lady to late 40s. undergraduates. Mm. Well, I mean, any undergraduates. Any really. undergraduates. It's a bit gamey, isn't he's it? He's not really. He's not really somebody you'd hold up no. as the ideal husband, no. straight father, is no. it? No. So again, with Plank of the Week, it's just the sheer hypocrisy of someone who thinks, you know, you know, net zero is a good thing. Uh, you know, we all need to go green literally yeah. next week. I mean, nobody um, even knows what net zero is anyway. No. no. But also, if it's... you've got a good argument, then give a good argument. Don't tell someone to go. Exactly. F themselves. Right. Well, I will exactly say, Christo. in his defence, what? what is at least he's an actor now and he stopped playing exactly the same part, which he did for the first 20 years of every movie he ever did. He's still not really veering from it. Well, he played... He played in the in the gentleman. He the gentleman, someone. he was actually the very good. He was very actually, good in I, that. I hate myself for saying that was actually quite good in that. He film. was. Yeah, he yeah. was good in that film. Yeah. He was. So he wasn't like foppy. Oh my God, is it raining? And you know, in a terrible shirt. Yeah. You know, and in what was it for? For, for, for children and uh, and and, and, a and, a, and a, for, gas guzzling car. Gas guzzling children yeah. in a Ferrari yeah. and a yeah. paternity suit. He yeah. can't get um, all his kids in it. That's for sure. <laughs> you couldn't. Hey? Good luck with that. So they must need to follow a caravan. They must need to follow in an SUV. 
Which, well, well, yeah. Which yeah. means double, yeah. double, double, double bubble, as we used yeah. to say. Mind you, if he stuck by his principles and went and bought a Prius or something like that, then he could probably get all the kids He wouldn't in get them all in that oh, either. Would he not? No, I don't know. a bigger know. car than that. Oh, right, And he seats five. Right, oh, God, so no. So he's got, he has to leave yeah. one out. He's probably not finished yet, put one in the either. boot. Well, you could do mm. that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but, I mean, bad news. The thing is, he's, he's not Also, gonna... why would you be against anyone having a referendum? You well, know, that's democracy, isn't it? Ah, but he doesn't like democracy. Oh, ah, right. He doesn't like newspapers, that's does he, right. very he doesn't, much? No, he, he doesn't he like free speech. He money to those speech. wallies from Hacked Off, doesn't yeah, exactly, he? Exactly, because, like because he was once caught in a car with Divine Brown... Um, playing with his joystick. Yeah. yeah. He was with Liz Hurley at the time as well. Do you remember? Yeah, I know. Well, she'd just worn that lovely uh, paperclip dress. Was yes. it paperclips? Was it Versace? Versace. 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 Was it Versace? Yeah. Uh, it was Versace. Yes, it was. It was, it was yeah. safety pins. I remember I was, pins. I was not editing the Express the night that happened. Oh, did you? Oh, well, you? On page one. Oh, oh, my God. Well, the, the worst thing, uh, beautiful picture. She looked mm. lovely. But all, all the, the young female reporters, there weren't that many of us on the sun at the time, we all had to then wear that dress <laughs> and go in the paper. And seriously, I, I look rubbish in frocks and I really look... Oh, I bet and, you look great. And you had, back in the day, obviously, it was back in 1872, you had to um, give your vital statistics in the paper as well. And I told the truth. And it was like, I said, oh, well, this is me, I'm size whatever, whatever. And everyone goes, oh, I'm size eight. And I'm going, no, you're not. No chance. I know. But so, yeah, yeah, yeah my, 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 my in-depth journalistic investigation involved well, wearing a safety pin frock. That was oh. the first. Well, at least you didn't have to go out with Hugh Grant, though. But that was the first, <gasps> wasn't it? That was the first sort of front well, that was page the first time. It was also the first time. Well, I think not, because I think Diana had already done that. Yes. But the point is, is that oh, it was the first Diana, time I'm we sorry. saw Liz Hurley or knew whoever she was. Yeah, yeah that's true. Because nobody yeah. ever knew who she was before Well, she was that. an actress. Well, yeah, but nobody would ever heard of her <laughs> until she put that dress on, and then yeah. suddenly she was a much more successful actress. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Strangely yeah. enough. Yeah. Anyway, who's your first nominee? My first nominee? Well, I'm going back to familiar ground, okay. I'm afraid. And the reason is because it is, of course, our London mayor. <laughs> we do love him. You he do like to nominate him. He is the jumped-up little pipsqueak Sadiq. Card. So glad you said and that. The reason is because I want you to feel reassured. Yes. I want you to feel very reassured today because obviously we are seeing the war in Ukraine. Mm. Uh, Putin has mentioned the nuclear weapons. Yes. But in order to reassure us all, Mayor Can't Blame Me for Anything has now put out a message to tell us that we are well prepared in London for a nuclear attack. <laughs> I mean, yes. to be fair, um, we're not really very well prepared for a tube strike. No. So well, no, never no, mind but, a nuclear but maybe strike. Maybe there's a cunning thought hey? here. Maybe we can all go down in the tube stations because there's no trains going through True. them, so we're safe. So it's safer down there. Yeah. It is safer down Genius there. Genius idea. What he could do is, I don't know, put cycle lanes and low-traffic neighbourhoods everywhere so any of the Russian troops that try and get it mm. will end up they, lost they, they or fined. Yeah. Or they won't yeah. actually be able to get anywhere because it's gridlocked everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so good luck trying to get across the London Bridge if you're invading. Can, can you char can you get electric tanks? Can you charge them up to your charging point? Well, you know what? Even Elon Musk has come out in the last few days and said it's actually time to go back to, to proper fuel. Yes, to diesel I know. Yeah, and petrol. This is a guy who makes his yeah. living out of electric cars. Yeah, and even he's now saying this is a mistake. Yeah. Well, he said that London has a resilient and well-established system in place to ensure key agencies work closely and effectively together oh, to keep God us safe, sake. including TFL. keeping Londoners fully informed about any emergencies. It's predicted two and a half million people would die, and it's predicted that there would be at least that number of injuries among everyone, as we're all wandering around, ravaged, burned and horrific. But at least <laughs> Mayor Khan will be in control. Yeah. Do you think he might clean the windows of City Hall before the nuclear strike? <laughs> oh, he'll be in his Range Rover. Yeah. He can lock the doors and yeah. close the windows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't that armour plated or something around? Yeah, I'm sure it is. It is because I mean... he faces death because every day because of racism. Why? <laughs> well, but yeah, yeah, it's not, not because he's a terrible mayor. It's clearly racism. It's yes. Well, why would you put out that statement when it's clearly and demonstrably, completely and utterly untrue? Well, he's a bit like sort of Harry and Meghan, isn't he? He has to get into every single story. So yeah. whenever there's a story mm. that he's not mentioned in, he has to come out and make a statement mm. about it. Do you think soon he's going to be like putting out a statement? Oh, did number two today? It was a really good one. Probably. I really did. Well, you and know, he went, to the, uh, he went to the NME Awards last week in Brixton. Oh, that was Academy, funny. And he got booed. Yeah. Because he got up on stage. And now you'd think the NME Awards are yeah. pretty woke, yeah. pretty laborish, yeah. pretty left-wing. But even they had had enough of the guy. And when he started trying to make jokes about Partygate, That's they Brixton booed him off the you. stage. That's Brixton for Yeah, you. I know. It's your mm. manner, no, isn't it? It's my mm. manner. Mm. We're rough down there. Yeah. Yeah. We don't take any prisoners. But well, you know, but in Brixton, as a result of his policies, if I wanted to, there are parts of Brixton where I can pull over and buy 
smack or crack openly, but I will get a ticket for parking. For parking, yeah. <laughs> wrongly what when I do the, the transaction. What if you keep the engine running and keep putting your foot on the brakes? Oh, yeah, maybe then maybe, I'll be all right. Maybe you'll be all right then. Yeah. Well, you get Divine no, Brown in there, you're well away, aren't you? There, yeah. <laughs> Last time I was with her in Brixton, I'll tell you something, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was, it was Very terrible. good. So, yeah, that's my nomination. Again, mm. I'm afraid it mm. is Sadiq Khan. Well, I'm going to go back to an old favourite as well, some organisation we haven't heard from in a while. It is, of course, Sage. Oh. oh you know, remember, remember when Sage was a herb? Do you remember them? Do you remember when Sage no, was just a just herb? Just a herb, yeah. You used to do it with your stuffing. I'm not keen yes. on Sage, really, as a herb. I don't use it much to cook with. I mean, you know Sage and onion stuffing, obviously. I love Sage and onion I'm not, I I'm love, not yeah, keen on using Sage in any, any other way, though. I oh, know Sage is, is lovely. And do you remember, of course, there is... It's good uh, with duck, I'm told. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Yeah. That's um, mentioned then. Parsley, Parsley Sage. Yeah. Rosemary. Rosemary and Thai. Yeah. Right. That was, again, did, did, Sage. Was that singing <laughs> by any chance? Well, I'm not very good at that no. song. I no. could sing. No. Oh, it's also a very old song. Tom, to quite a lot of people listening to this fair. and watching it and going, what's he, what's he on? <laughs> did you pick up some crack on the way in? <laughs> eh? I did, I did park in a terrible space, though. <laughs> That's the only thing. But no, sage used to be a herb. I know, it's, it it's it still to, a herb. And it used to mean knowledgeable, surely, didn't it? As well? oh, yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, see. Do you know what sage stands for? No. Well, you see, there's a, an interesting thing. A piece well, I'll be the judge of that. Tell me. Well, it's, it stands for the Scientific Advisory Group. Oh. Well, what's so they've the added e the E because obviously otherwise it would be sad. <laughs> <laughs> Sags, it's SAG is much though. better, don't you think? Especially when Which you think also of... Screen Actors Guild as well, because there's Maybe a SAG Maybe that's why they added yes, the E. Yeah, but Helen Mirren didn't like that, though, because she, when you get to a certain age, it really <laughs> you does not describe <laughs> yeah. where you're going in life. This is unbelievably bizarre, this particular edition of Planks. But anyway, um, so you might remember they used to meet on a regular basis mm. during the pandemic. What and are they all doing now? Independent Sage as well, who are sort of off to the side. I don't Some got members, that. What they were that? independent of Sage, so they called themselves Independent Sage even though many of them were also in Sage. So it was ah. a bit confusing as to why there were so many different Sages. Was it like when Jerry Halliwell left the Spice Girls? Kind of. It was similar. But she, she didn't went call herself... Yeah, but she didn't call herself the Spice Girls. The Independent Jerry. Spice. Independent Spice. Independent, independent Spice. spice. She could have done that. Yeah. Old Spice there was, wasn't there? Yeah. That's another one. Yes. That's yeah. different. Anyway, um, <laughs> they've decided that because COVID's now apparently no longer a thing, mm -hmm. it's disappeared on account of the war in Ukraine. Yeah, it's, yeah absolutely. I mean, they've managed to chase it away. Yeah. Vladimir Putin, actually, who we're going to carry over, by the way, as a winner. He won it last week. We're going to keep him in, I think, for this week. And I'm not being funny. Yeah. But, I mean, he really is a plank. There's no question oh, about but it. He and is, but for all its fault, he has cured COVID. But he has managed to get rid oh, of COVID. There is that. Um, you know. But, but don't worry, though, because where it's even though Sage is standing down... They also stand ready. So they're standing in two right, different ways. Right, just in ways. case there is another... They're ready to come back, right, if they're required. How do you stand down and stand ready? What is the pose that well, you would do? Well, I guess you'd go down... Do you want to illustrate it? Yeah, so you stand... Still be re ready, down, sort of poised. Poised. You know, poised. Sort of like, you know, those superheroes. You would be... But you have to sort of also be down. Down and, and also poised. ready. Mm. Yeah. Just your well, weekend you should know. Sort of it's my <laughs> You should know what I'm, that's I'm like. I'm down, but I'm ready. <laughs> I've told you before. I've gone down about this, but I'm ready. But talking to Putin, I mean, this table is sort of like a bit like what he's got, isn't it? I mean, it's big, so you can't sit that close to one another. Eh? And his is bigger. Putin's oh, he's table. got a very big table. Very Have big we gone on to Putin already then now? Well, or are we, we, still we, back can on still we can still discuss well, Putin. We, we like to know the parameters. But I'm just saying that, that we're Putin keeping over? Putin over. Don't keep yes. up. Are you listening? Yes, but I don't know whether we're now talking about uh, Putin or whether we well, should be doing Sage. Am I poised and ready to Putin or am I... Would you really like, would say. Is it your secret crush? <laughs> no. All that horse Not with thing, all of that Botox. Chested. No. There's all a lot of that Botox filler. Mm. Honestly, have you no. ever seen anything like it? Mm. Not really. He's, no. He's very puffy now. Yes, Puffy some people Putin. think he's not very well. Yeah. No. Some people think he's taking steroids. Um, anyway, so right. Sage was run, of course, by Patrick Valance. Yes. And Sir, pa and Sir Chris Whitty. Both sirs, actually. Sir Patrick Valance and Sir Chris Lovely. Whitty. Lovely, what deserved? I don't know what they're going to do now. Can you imagine having been at the forefront? I've been asking, actually, since the beginning of January for Witty to come out and actually give us some kind of explanation as to why he did what he did in December. Yeah. Why he told everybody that Omicron yeah. was really, really dangerous, even though everyone in South Africa was telling me it wasn't No, it's dangerous. not. No, it's, not. it's like a cold. Actually, and, and even though Boris Johnson was saying, you can still have your Christmas parties, and he basically said, don't. So everybody cancelled them, and loads of people lost a load of money. 
more people lost businesses, more people lost children and lo loved ones who killed themselves. More I mean, I really lives, think he they? should answer for yeah. that. Yeah, don't I you? feel guilty now for having sage and onion stuffing with my Christmas dinner. Right. And yeah. do you know we how many people are on it, Sage? What, on sage and onion stuffing? No, on the sage, committee. the actual committee. Well, I know that there's that communist. About 96 of them. Really? Yes. Well, that was, the, the cop, they must have broken the rules to meet. But a lot oh, they must have done. <laughs> they must have done. Quite, but how could they have done the rule of six? Point. Did they do it in six little... Uh, but a lot of them are behavioural psychologists as well. They're yeah. not even actually virologists. There's one of them who most recently blocked me, um, who's a mathematician. You've been blocked by everybody, I have, you? yeah. Oh, I'm no, quite proud of it. Have you blocked block me yet? <laughs> um, you will, eventually, one night. Well, um, if you carry on sending me pictures like that, yeah. This, I think it's Christine Paget or something like that. Oh, right. She's half, she was German originally, moved here a long time ago. She's a mathematician. Petition. She used to study astronomy, right? And she's busy telling us why she thinks we should all start behaving differently because COVID could kill you. It's like you what? You're, you but might that's... as well ask the greengrocer. Or she us. knows or us. <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, but she doesn't know any more about medicine but than I do. Is the communist still in it? The one who Mickey, wants to yes. make us all... Susan like, Mickey. Basically. Yes, and yeah. she said, wear masks for the rest of time. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, she should probably. Do she I'd mean... like her to wear a bag. No, sorry, mean, I shouldn't say does that. Does she mean time the herb? No, no, she I doesn't think so. Sage and thyme. I'd sage and thyme. You can put them in a sentence. Oh, we're on the home garden now. Yeah, Dylan the dog. Really do you remember that? Yeah. Dylan yeah. the dog? Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> that? No, he won't. It's too young. What? What? The herb garden. Do you remember the herb garden? Which herb garden? The, the kids' TV show. Oh, no, I think you meant an actual herb garden. Because I've got a herb garden. Was it before Bill and Ben? No, I think it's around about the same time. Really? Yeah. I don't remember Dylan the dog. Do you not remember Dylan? Oh, okay. Dylan the dog. That was a magic herb, is it? I know, he was a rabbit in that, wasn't he? I don't know. <laughs> that was written by somebody who's on drugs. The Magic Relevant was definitely written by somebody on acid. I like sausage meat in my stuffing. I put mix the sage and onion with sausage That's meat. That's fine. It's absolutely Thanks lovely. Thanks for sharing. Well, uh, see, I'm a vegetarian, so I like a nice aubergine with mine. Do you, I don't mm. like aubergine. I'm a Greek who doesn't like aubergine. That's now, what do you make That's about? Wrong. So does that mean you can't eat misaka? Well, I, I, no, I, I put a courgette layer in for my part. I have a little corner of Why? the... And it's moustaka, thank you. And I put courgette in instead of the aubergine. Not in my house, it's not. <laughs> Well, that's it's a, in a Greek household. It's a moussaka. But courgettes are only little, aren't they? You need something, no, you a, bit more, you need long, something a bit more you substantial, substantial Christa, you a bit can more get, filling. No, you can get big courgettes if you've not can seen you? those. Yeah, not no, little ones. No. I, I, do you know what? I, I don't ones. have the constitution to take an aubergine. The most I can manage is a courgette. They're right. a bit knobbly as well, courgettes, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, mm. to take a deep breath and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, breathe through your nose. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, apparently there are some subgroups um, inside of Sage. What, of courgettes? Oh, so that they're not just the 96. OK. There are others. This is aside from independence, some of which include the famous epidemiologist Professor Neil Ferguson. Oh, yeah. The man who's Taking, never got anything now, right in his life. Yeah, now, now he some. likes a, a, an aubergine. He does. He does. Especially mm. German. I'm sure one. he likes many root vegetables. He likes, yeah, German sausage. He does. Does he? So, um, well, his. his, his which which of his mistresses? Yeah, sure. <laughs> we tell, I'm sure we, a girl we, one we in could have a minute's silence for the end of Sage, I suppose, if you wanted to, but I don't really feel like it. Nah. We should have brought it to Paxo Forum. Uh, this has gone on longer than I meant it to. <laughs> yes, yes. Sage have been nominated. That's my first nomination. We'll be back uh, with Plank of the Week after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Plank of the Week. Uh, this is, of course, <laughs> the new version of Plank of the Week with the new graphics and the new uh, style. And Dawn Neeson is here, as is Christo. Um, we're going to go back to you, Dawn, for your second nomination. Oh, right, OK, please. sorry, I sort of like, you know, lost I know the plot it, with, lost the plot with Sage. It works to you, have no, I haven't done this before. No. Right, OK, I am going to go for another favourite, I'm sorry, uh, Nicola Sturgeon. God bless her. Uh, aided and abetted. Is she still in charge? Uh, well, in charge of what? I'm not quite. Aided and abetted by her social justice secretary, who's a lady called Shona Robison. Oh, yes, I've heard and, of her. Uh, have you? Yes. I haven't got a clue. Um, but, but, in any case, this is um, Scotland's Gender Recognition, Recognition Reform Bill. Um, and it is going to mean that you can basically identify as whatever you want without any medical or scientific proof. Yes. Um, and JK that seems like a good idea, doesn't it? Uh, uh, perfectly safe for women. And J.K. Rowling has pointed out that this will actually harm the most vulnerable women in society by axing the need for psychiatric reports before anyone even pretends transition. And this Shona creature... Um, is she a woman or is she a creature? Any she case, is a woman. She's well, a woman. Well, I mean, she was the last time I checked, <clears> but she <throat> might be reassigning a gender. How did you check? Say that. Well, because I've seen her. I mean, I'm old-fashioned enough to decide when I look but at you, someone. But, but then the point of this is you can identify. You don't have to look like that. No, I get that. I mean, you know, Chris could be identifying as Christine tonight. I realised that was a wrong thing <clears> to say, wasn't <throat> it? Because yeah. she looks like a woman. She obviously yeah. must be one. Mm -hmm. No, but she isn't. 
Well, she is, but you well, don't know she is. she is. Well, you're saying I don't know. Well, I'm saying I do know. No, but you don't know. Well, I think I do. No, you don't know. Any case... Yes. She that's, stood... Is that her? No, that's, no, that's J.K. Rowling. Rowling. Yeah. She's a woman. Yeah. That is her. Oh. There you go. She definitely looks like a woman. Wait, is there a, yeah, like... but it doesn't matter what where, you look like. Where that's do the point. the women from the SNP buy their jackets from? Because that is a Nicola Sturgeon <coughs> jacket, it, isn't it? Is. it? I, I well, actually... Well, they all, they all they dress wear, the same. The, the I actually same jacket. had the confession to make. What? I mean, I'm going to talk about my clothes a lot tonight, obviously. I've, I'm, uh, I've got a jacket the same as Nicola Sturgeon's. Have I hate you? Myself. I hate myself. short one? Uh, no, not one of the crop ones. It's the red one she wears that's nipped in at the waist. Nipped? Uh, nipped in at the waist. And so in the case... bolero jacket? <clears throat> is that what you'd call a bolero jacket? No, that's a, one of the short ones, oh, just oh, under right. your boobs. I think that's what she buys. Yes. Bolero. Yeah, a bolero jacket is when it's a short jacket. Is it, it just goes uh, under the uh, uh, under the bust. I see. Yeah. How do you know that? Because Cause he wears I know one a weekend. About these things. <laughs> Any case, Shona stood up in the Scottish Parliament and actually Aye. said there was no evidence that predatory and abusive men have ever had to pretend to be anything else to carry out abuse from predatory behaviour. That's not true, is it? Mm. Well, Shona, I have a list here. <laughs> You want to see some of these pictures? No, I don't really. Uh, no, you don't. No. Um, yeah, of, of women who have sexually attacked and abused um, other women. Yes. And some of these, I mean, look. I mean, look at look at Rachel Smith there, bless her. I mean... Oh, dear. You know. Yeah. Hi, Rachel. There's another Rachel. Yeah. Rachel's a popular name. Yeah. Um, but they look like blokes to me. They do. Funny enough, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mark Conway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a woman at weekends? Yeah. Any case, so their argument seems to be that men will attack women no matter what, so it doesn't matter whether they're women or men. Yeah, but the thing right? is, I mean, sort of like women aren't in women's women, transgender women should not be in women's prison, right? Because you can just now say that I'm a woman, I need to go to a woman's prison. But the problem with that, if we're getting down to the logistics of body parts, is that if you're assigned a toilet or a prison based on your body parts and you're a trans man, so therefore you have transitioned to become a man, right. then you will still have women's parts and then you're still going to have the problem of someone who looks like a man being in a woman's space. So it's an unsolvable problem. Yeah. You've solved sense? it, actually. You made a lot of sense. I was listening to your show the other week and you said, <coughs> I think, that should you not just have gender-based toilets based on what you have in terms of your anatomy? Well, yes. Which I thought was quite a good idea. Yeah, or just have uh, toilet cubicles mm. with a toilet and a sink in yeah. individually behind locked doors. Yeah. yeah. No, as long as you have to walk past... Which a lot of places have. Yeah. As long as you don't have to walk past but, men at a urinal. I don't but, even but, like walking but, past but, men but, at a urinal. No, no, no. I stood next to you at a urinal once in the splash. Did you? I don't mean to be funny. I didn't see you. But you did splash a lot. Did I? Yeah. Well. Had you been using your toner that day? Maybe. Oh, OK. There's but, a lot of force going on there. Talking... You nearly broke the ceramic. What were you doing with it? I don't think it's me. I think he's mistaken me for somebody else. Oh, right, OK. Well, easy yeah. mistake to make. But Maybe it was a dream I, I had. Actually, Maybe it was a dream. <laughs> look, apart from the urinals, <laughs> I actually, you know, if there is, like, separate cubicles for men and women and people who are identifying with whatever they want to identify, it's still a bit uncomfortable as a woman. Because if there is, say, like, a sanitary products machine in there or a, a condom machine or something or other... I just feel a bit uncomfortable standing there washing put, my hands. Put, put in them the in the cubicle. That's why I'm saying put it all in behind an individual door, each one. Why, why do we have to do that? Why can't we just have... Because you'd have the problem that I outlined. You'd have someone who looks like a man who's got a vagina using a women's toilet. What, so what? then you'd still have the problem with men being able to go into women's but toilets. But why can't they just use a, a separate, like a disabled loo where everyone mm. can use? Why, yeah. why well, do we yeah, have to rewrite? But then disabled people would get annoyed about that. Why? Because then they'd have to wait. Well, everybody has to wait. Everybody has to wait. But, yeah, but some pe disabled people need to go. When you've got to go, you've got to go. Yeah. Okay. Right. You see what I mean? So there's that problem. Anyway, I still well. think Nicola Sturge is a plank. Yes. Yeah, well, exactly, well, exactly <laughs> yeah, apart from, let's yeah. Not, let's not get too much Because I, I, I think, you know, yes. I'm, I'm standing with J.K. Rowling on this one. I think, oh, yeah. you know, women's rights... Do I have think a that's place. Fair. I think Absolutely. that's fair. I think Chris, I'd just like to design toilets. I think I'd be really good at it. All right, maybe yeah. you should do it. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you where I won't be designing toilets. Yes. And this is my choice. Do you have a lot of experience in toilets? Well, I may have spent one or two hours in <laughs> them in my life. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you know, my younger days before yeah. Grinder. Now, this is somewhere where Chunk. I will not be putting a toilet. They don't deserve one. No. Do you know where they don't deserve a where? toilet? Go on. The management offices of Network 10 Television. In Australia. In Australia. Right. That's a long way away. Yes, it is a long <coughs> way away. Mm. They have neglected 
neighbours. They have. Now, 30... This is why we're trying to save it, right? 37 years. We are trying to save neighbours. 37 years. Okay. Neighbours has been on our screens. Mm. And about 10 or 15 years ago, Channel 10, Network 10, as it was during the prisoner cell block H days, of course, when uh, that you know brilliant... a bit about TV, does this boy. ...brilliant show was on television. Well, of course, Neighbours, as you will well know, Charles, started actually on Channel 7, which is the home of Home and Away. And then it was Axe, because it wasn't very good. And then Channel 10 swooped it up, spent loads of money on it, became an instant worldwide global phenomenon. Then what happened was that Channel... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Elbow slip, sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> no, it's fascinating. Go on. Good. Yeah. Mm. Then what happened was Hop. that yeah. Channel 5 took it over and... Channel 5 here. Uh, Channel 5 here. Yeah. Yeah. Network 10 in Australia thought, well, we don't have to worry about it being on, on our main channel anymore. And you know those side channels, you know, they're all called Oxygen or Breeze or... 10 Plus or, or something. Blow. You know, one of those channels. <laughs> I don't think Blow is accessible to most of us. Oh. That's just you. Oh. Mm. I wondered why Bouncer was <laughs> wagging his tail on that channel. <laughs> now I know why. Um, so they put it on one of the side channels where it gets no viewers. So now Channel 5 has pulled out. I thought it got a million viewers no, worldwide. In, in the UK it does. Right. But, that, the, but Neighbours became reliant on the UK money because it got such a low audience because right. it was on Channel Blow. Oh, I see. So that means that now Channel 5 have pulled out, there's no audience for Neighbours in Australia, mm. which is the real reason and the real story why it's being axed and this beloved show of 37 years on air where we have seen Kylie marrying Jason we saw Bouncer marrying Macaulay from next door in his dream and having those little puppies. Guy like Pierce was in it Guy Pierce Margot was in Robbie. it. Margot Robbie was yeah. in it. Even Russell Crowe was in Crow, it when he had a drink in the waterhole all those years ago, just as an extra. Also we saw, I mean, do you remember Des and Daphne? No. Not really. I never really watched it, to be honest. Oh, I loved it in its early you know, days. No, well, really? No one really would have guessed. did. Yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, Jason Donovan's father was in it, Terence Donovan, was a very esteemed actor uh, in Australia. And all of these people started there, and now this show is ending. And Channel 10 Australia, I hold you responsible for sticking it on that channel. And that is why it is a travesty. It's, well, I mean, maybe somebody will save it, as we said. Well, maybe someone will say maybe it, but they have to put it on a proper channel. And the boss of Home and Away, now, he came out and said, well, you know what? We didn't shove Home and Away on a side channel. No, Channel 7, which started Home and Away after the success Surely of Surely it must cost them quite a lot of money to make the, sh the show well, and they to said put it, it on to, a side it channel. Isn't it? Well, exactly, but Channel 5 were paying it all. Right. So, so now, because it's on a side channel on Blow or, 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 or Eat or Breathe or Suck or whatever it is, now, unfortunately, it only gets 100,000 viewers in Australia. Not very many. That's not very many. What a Blow. So. Well, what a blow. So yeah. did that, so yeah. it? So I don't know what you know, channel's you know called. What? I think I... it is Oxygen, I think it's called, the channel. I, you know what? I don't care. What do you mean you don't care? I don't care. <laughs> what do you mean you don't care? <laughs> you have they've no got heart. A, they've got a gender non-conforming... You used to be the, the Daily Star. You must have done stories on Neighbours. For I, I, I started working on Neighbours as a, a very young, very young journalist on a magazine when it first came out over here and I would one of my jobs was to research what was coming up in the plot lines. So I'd sit up all night talking to Australia about what was coming up in the yeah. in the plot lines. Mrs. Which Mangle. is one of the reasons I really can't stand it. It wasn't good for you. Mrs. Mangle. I'm which told, he married I'm John Worthington. The, um, and I never watched it. I'm told that the channel to which you refer in Australia is called Peach. Peach. So I don't know where you got blow from. I don't know where I got blow from. It's, it's always like one of those Peach strange blow. names. Well, peach is a fruit. It's really easy to remember, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't, I, well, I don't other know. Other things can look slightly peachy. They can. Yeah. And they Pain can be Jane linked to a blow. Brain. Do you remember her makeover when she became the face of Lassiter? I don't think she's going to say yes to that question, are you? She's back in it now. Face no, no, of no, Lassiter. No, no, Annie no, Jones. No, 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 I've never watched it. In real life, her name's Annie Jones, but she's actually Annika Jasko because she I, changed it when she I had to type up the plot lines. How do you keep all this the useless magazine? information in your head? And Anne had a very, very esteemed Australian oh, actress. Oh, God almighty. She, played Daniel. she was very famous for picking Should we just, just give him the plank now? He's one. Not him. Not the not neighbours. Him. He's he won it. Plank. Yeah, I think we ought to, actually. Yeah, it's an incredible amount of knowledge you've got. I'm very good with television. I do have a lot of television knowledge. Well, you've worked in television, haven't you? I worked in television. You sometimes mention that. I do sometimes mention that. Well, you were sarcastic, Michael. Well, you were a loose woman at one yeah, point. You were on loose women at I was one point. A loose woman. Then they weren't out you were a woman. So they sacked him. <laughs> I, we can't do I that just, now. He was loose. It was so how was I identified. I identified as Janet Street Porter. Yeah, nobody wants time. to do that. <laughs> Even Janet Street Porter doesn't want to identify as Janet Street Porter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I once watched her walk out of an award ceremony because somebody was doing an impression of her. You might have been there. She can be a bit stroppy. She doesn't like it, does she? No. Let's just say that she's not very different in real life. 
No, no. that's what I've mm -hmm. heard. Mm -hmm. um, um, all right. Now, uh, I'm going to produce uh, my, fine, my second oh, nomination. Oh, you've got more information for us. <laughs> yes, I haven't finished on Nate. No, sorry. <laughs> take it out, go. Uh, well, anyway, um, here's somebody who appears... Maybe, I don't know, it's Holmes Under the Hammer on Channel 5. Would you Holmes know Under the Hammer? Holmes I've Under the Hammer. I've not seen that. <laughs> Out the Hammers. <laughs> There's a guy on Holmes Under the Hammer called Martin Roberts. Oh, he was in The Jungle. Was he? Yeah, was yeah, he? he was in I'm a Celebrity. He had a, like a, some sort of breakdown, I think, when he really? was in there. Yeah. Well, I think he's having another one because um, he's now um, been all over the papers this week because he decided it would be a good idea to try and buy some things for the children of Ukraine. Oh. He went off to his local Costco, right? Hmm. Um, and unfortunately for him, um, he was trying to buy all sorts of things like multiple bottles of Calpol. Uh, he was also trying to buy sort of various sort of medicines that you can't really buy... Um, in, in a war zone. In a war zone, <laughs> no. probably, mm -hmm. uh, to send them to the kids. But, of course, what you might or might not know is that you're not allowed to buy a lot of cowpole uh, because, apparently, you might make crystal meth out of it or something. His cunning plan was somewhat thwarted uh, because you can only buy two bottles of cowpole. Oh, it doesn't dear. go very far. Not going to go very far, is it, in, for the um, kids? No. In, in no. a children's sort of camp no. in uh, Ukraine. But instead of just, you know, accepting that and getting on with it, he came out of Costco's and decided to film himself sort of basically bursting into tears. Oh. In and Costco car park. Yeah. We've all done that. Well... I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> listen, when the queues are a bit long and you've had to leave without getting what you want, <laughs> the big jar of Maxwell House coffee. I once tried to right? get tyres there and it was... It Why? Was quite, because they sell tyres at Costco. Well, they sell everything at Costco, yeah. but don't you have to buy a thousand of them or something? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's what I mean. I had to open a quick fit, OK? <laughs> I mean, really everything's stressful. huge, isn't it? I mean, so the only thing that's about. limited is cowpole, which is the only thing you wanted. But you <laughs> and, he could, and they're going, yeah, sorry, I'm afraid you have to put those 200 other bottles of cowpole back <laughs> and we can only sell you two. Oh, bless him. I mean, his heart was in the right place. Well, it sort of was, but, but, but I'm not that keen. And I suppose he speaks for a lot of these um, virtue-signalling kind of celebs, you know, who are all A lot of the them Ukrainian are sobbing flag, on TV, aren't they? A lot they? of sobbing on TV. Yeah. Last week, we had James Corden nominated because yeah, he, he was said, sobbing. you know, what am I going to tell my kids about the war? It's like they're not it's in the war. It's not about you. It's really not about you. Yeah. So, again, similarly for him, mm. uh, he, took, he went to Instagram to share with his 15,000 followers from the car park at Costco, how upset he was. Oh, riveting. I'm going to start following him. It sounds I mean, like a riot. Well, I'm looking like better than neighbours. I'm looking... It probably is, actually. I'm looking out for the next instalment <laughs> of, you know, Martin <laughs> Roberts goes shopping for a cardigan <laughs> and doesn't get one. Did he get very upset? Did he, he was cry? weeping. Yeah. Yeah. Channel 10 could put that on, on blow, couldn't they? Uh, they could. He says, I've come to Costco and I've just been buying lots of things like pampers, kids' stuff, tampacks and other bits and pieces, you know, things for kids. <laughs> Because it's the kids, and he sort of chokes up while he's talking. Tampax for little kids. And then kids. he starts wiping his eyes. How I mean, many Tampax would you have to buy? Well, he can buy as many of those as he wants. You can, apparently. yeah, you can buy a lot of there those. Isn't, there isn't a, the, the, I mean, I'm asking you this. There isn't a limit on the number of Tampax that one can buy. I wouldn't have thought I don't think so. so. No. Well, no. you don't really. Um, I don't really, know. It's not really medicine. I once, well, I once knew someone who smoked one. Why? I, I don't you know. You can't they smoke you, one. Well, that's what they found out. Rubbish. I mean, you must have some old friends. <laughs> you, you're surprised? <laughs> I mean, I know. Actually, I'm surprised I've got any friends. I spent so much time watching Neighbours. It was, during, it was during the clubbing days when, you know, you, you just... He talks about that as if it was a war zone. <laughs> what? The clubbing, the clubbing days? days. <laughs> <laughs> as if he remembers them It as probably well, was. He doesn't. You know, he has no idea what he was doing. Anyway, uh, mm. that's my uh, second nomination. I almost said final nomination. Martin Roberts for weeping in front of the cameras uh, outside of Costco in the car park because he could only get two bottles of Calpol oh. for the children of Ukraine. Uh, we'll be back with more planks after this. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. Dawn Neeson is here with us, former editor of the Daily Star, of course, now broadcaster extraordinaire, and, of course, Neighbours expert, uh, <laughs> Mr Christian And Fimpas very interesting company. Has joined us. Uh, I think we have to ban him from talking about that. <laughs> um, let's talk a bit about Vladimir Putin, because he will be carried over. Um, I'm not sure whether he will end up in the final three. He might not. Um, last week, obviously, he did win it. Um, but, I mean, it is awful what's going on there, isn't it? I mean, you, you, at the end of the I can't day... can't believe it, really. I mean, no. he is being absolutely monstrous. Yeah. I mean, it is awful. And the fact that, that he is bombing people trying to get out of there, it, it's really... As they're trying to go through the as safe corridor. I mean, you just think, what on earth are you thinking? Oh, well, the only safe corridor they actually get through is the one into Belarus, which is, is, is like going into Fry Russia. Yeah. into the fire. Yeah. I mean, I am sick of the Western virtue signal. I don't want to go too serious, yeah. but I am sick to death of hearing politicians in the West like, oh, my God, this was a complete surprise. And, and also, no Bani, idea. you know what, Bani? Banning everything Russian is not really the answer no. either, is it? I mean, let's ban the Bolshoi Ballet. You know, let's ban, you know, uh, Ivan... 
Denisovich. Yeah, but all those very, very rich women in Moscow can't go to Gucci and uh, Louis Vuitton and buy their handbags now because they've shut the shops. Well, the Chanel shop was still open at the weekend because they're all still in there. Yeah, they shut it today. Oh, they, did they? Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, so, yeah. Well, they've yeah. probably got enough Chanel handbags, to be honest. I think, oh, how many handbags We can do you only need? buy one every three months, a Chanel handbag. Did you know Why? that? Why? Because they don't let you buy in bulk. Because they it's like bad news for Martin Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I wanted a couple of hundred to put for the kids. How do, how do they the know? Kids. Because I think you have to give your name and everything when you buy a Chanel bag. Can you not have an assumed because identity? You can't, well, I suppose you'd have, you'd have to send a fake person. You, can buy yeah. you can't yeah. go into the Chanel store and buy three or four bags because they like to protect the brand and not have too many sold at any one time. It's very good marketing. Well, I've never bought one, so it's not... No, me neither. See, I have. I bought one for my mother. <coughs> well, I'm not surprised. They're very expensive, aren't they? I know. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a good son. Thousands. I'm a very, very good son. How are the shoes today, by the way? Oh, they're fine. I'm wearing a nice pair of brogues today. Somebody did ask me if I could get an update on your gout. You've, you, you have a foot fetish with me, don't you? No. I think you do. Not at all. You volunteered that you had funny feet. I do have funny feet, you and know. now you've talked about flat? nothing else. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're flat and square. But I, I, square. I can bend my toes over, under, you see. Yeah. Oh, I can write with my toes. Is can you? Yeah, I've got double-jointed oh toes. That's, that explains the a lot of The only bit on me articles. that's actually useful is my toes. <laughs> 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 That's very good. Anyway, why don't you give us your final nomination? Oh, right, OK, my final Please nomination. Write it with your toes. We are... <laughs> oh, come on, I've confessed to wearing a safety bin dress and writing with my toes. What's yeah. not to like? Yeah. Um, my final one is linked to... Is linked to Putin and Russia. Yes. And it is the Federation International Feline. Oh, yes. Oh. Uh-huh, yeah, Cats. absolutely. Or FIF, as they're called. Yeah. They have our, um, banned Russian felines from taking part in any cat competitions. I didn't know there were any cat competitions. But evidently, it's, yeah, but it's no more pussy galore for Russia, obviously. Oh so, yeah, so Russian cats are banned now from... I'm, I'm assuming it's a bit like Crufts, isn't it? It's like... Well, that's dogs, though. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Something like yeah, Crufts, we, Yeah, I don't say dogs when you look at me like that. But, I mean, <laughs> it is... But, no, it's, it's like... But the, the, the cat competitions, I'm assuming, are a bit like Crufts. Really? Do so the cat know. version of Crofts. With the cat version well, of Crofts. Do they do it yeah. run up and down? Yeah, they so. can't do the little trotting along, can they? They could do They lift up the backside. No, I think it's all about having a well-groomed pussy. Oh, I suppose so. You can yeah. win for that. <laughs> I well, mean, you know, yeah. that's not a bad thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I really wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. I really wouldn't. I really wouldn't know. No, no. It's not something I so think So, in any case, I'm, I'm nominated for Plank because, I mean, look, I, I, I get with, you know, <laughs> sanctions also, and, and banning most things, but banning cats... I mean, also, presumably, I mean, you can't travel anywhere if you're Russian, so you're not very likely to be coming anywhere with your cat, are you? No. Mm. You can't go on a plane. No. How are you going to get the cat to a catcher? And do you think Putin's sitting there going, oh, my God, I can't get my pussies out? Well, he's probably got one to stroke, hasn't he? And he sits there like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think there are a Not... lot of people doing their bit rejecting Russian pussies at the moment. Yeah, yeah. You'd hope so anyway. Well, yeah. Mm. But yes. his missus and kids are in a house in Switzerland, aren't they? Oh, they are. Really? Uh-huh. Uh, mm. He's supposed to have um, more than one kid, isn't he? Well, she, he's got four with this one. She's a rhythmic ballerina. Oh, she's a rhythmic gymnast. She's not the... A rhythmic ballerina, I was going to say. There was was they're all rhythmic. That. There was a great piece in uh, one of the papers this week about a girl who is thought to be one of his children. Yeah, a love child. Who he had a love child yeah. with a millionaire and former cleaner... Um, some woman from Russia. A millionaire and former she's cleaner. She's a cleaner. <laughs> well, you know, absolutely. she's now a millionaire. I hate to think what she polished know. to I make herself that money. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. I, so, if he's got four with one woman and other children with others... Worse than Hugh Grant. Have Hugh Grant. We, or have we Hugh found Grant of Russia. a world leader's sperm to rival our Prime Minister's sperm? Why are you talking about that? Because Boris is very fertile. Yeah, I would imagine that. that would be something that Putin would admire. Maybe. And I'm just saying, have we found someone who is as... Maybe they virile. could potent. virile. I think yes, virile. Before. Maybe they could use that as some sort of male bonding thing and, and stop what's going on. You know, yeah. talking about how well, virile. It might be they something are. that Putin respects. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. You know, I think so. I don't think so. No. Well, there's, there's my suggestion for yeah. this. Yeah, Thanks very much indeed. Right. I'm doing my bit for Russian pussy tonight, in any case. Oh, well, mm. fair enough. Um, would you like to make your final nomination? Yes, this, this angers me. Does it? Oh, it's God. actually really angers Does it involve me. TV? No. Well, oh. it does. It oh. involves someone going on television and talking the biggest load of claptrap I've ever heard in my life, and that is, of course, the pretty boy himself. He's got a foppish head who looks like Hugh Grant. It is 
Justin Trudeau. Oh, yes. The uh, Canadian he's Prime here, Minister. He, he uh, did a press conference with Mr. Viral himself. What's he doing Boris here, Johnson. by the way? Oh, he went to meet the Queen, did a little visit. You know, and as if the poor cow hasn't had enough to do with this year. She I mean, has to put up with him. I'm no, surprised no. he didn't freeze her bank account and, you know, have a go at her for protesting. <laughs> yeah. Because he gave this great long diatribe today against Putin, saying that he wants respect for sovereignty, he wants to have democracy stood for, oh, yeah. he wants to stay true to these values, he wants to fight for that all over the world. This was a man that basically froze the bank accounts of truckers, mm -hmm. decided that he was going to, to forcibly round them up. He took tactics directly out of the rule book of Vladimir Putin to deal with his own people. And then he has the audacity and the lack of self-awareness to stand at a podium and tell us that he wants to fight for sovereignty and democracy. Mm -hmm. He's a hypocrite, he has a neck made of brass, and he's a moron. He really and he's is. a plank. He really is. He's, he's been, been on this show already this year for Has some he? of the actions that he's taken. So for him to be on it yet again, that's going to keep him he's pretty a, he's much good, up yeah. there. But he, he also, all, all the, the protesting truckers, most of whom were vaccinated, by the way, in any case, um, he also branded them racist and misogynist, didn't he? Did. he? And when a, a Conservative MP stood up and said, look, you can't say that, you can't slander them that way, he said, well, maybe you might be happy to stand with swastikas and fed, Confederate flags, but I'm not. She was a Jewish MP. <gasps> ha. Yes. He's, he, he He's really a is plank. an absolute idiot. Plank he really of the is. Plank. He had no self-awareness as to what he was doing. And now Putin is clamping down on protesters, treating them absolutely appalling. You know, obviously, there's no comparison between what Trudeau um, has done with his people and what Putin is doing The Canadian in police Ukraine. were pretty rough with but them. But the Canadian though, police were really rough. And, and he was he, clamping he, down on free speech and protest. Yeah, yeah, freezing their bank accounts, confiscating their pets. Their pets! If anyone with with a potential threat of... And also, did he not say he was going to kill the pets? Yeah. If they didn't anyone came near Dominique Devereaux or Dolly Parton, I'm telling you right now, there would be murders. How yeah. come they're not named after Neighbours characters? Yeah. Because there are... Dominique Devereaux is a dynasty character. OK. I mean, Dallas and Dynasty take precedence over oh, Neighbours. I know way ask. more than about Dallas and Dynasty. Listen, I was working in America at the heyday of Dallas and Dynasty. I, know. I was oh, once sent to God. Dallas. I've told you the story before. Now. To buy next season's script. And you didn't keep it for me because you didn't know that you would... Go, well, you were because I didn't know you then, and I had to give it to the people who had paid me to go and buy it. I think it. you told me that story on this last plank of the week. I think well, you there did. we are. It's a good story. Um, Stop wanting to shoot yourself in the head. <laughs> Sorry, the night's just flying past. Um, but you must have watched yeah. Dallas, come on. No, I didn't, actually, no. You I don't watch, watch a lot of Dallas. TV. I watch you must a lot have of watched football. Dallas. Um, any case, there's a, you know the one country Sorry. that Sir, um, Trudeau has admitted to really admiring? Oh, yeah. China. China. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was a guest, actually. Funny that, yeah. He mm -hmm. likes China. He he, an the, absolute the, plank. The basic dictatorship is allowed him to actually turn their economy round. OK. Really? Never Just a bit of Dallas. genocide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking serious <laughs> geopolitics here, and you're talking Dallas. They are very similar. I mean, uh, it was a very iconic show. I know, I didn't, I didn't watch it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I mean, it. I'm not buying it. But I did go to the launch show of El Dorado. Do you remember El Dorado? Oh, I now I love I El Dorado. I went to the bar in El Dorado. Yes, yeah. You don't well, sometimes it was, me. It was in, um, what do you call that place that it was in, in southern Spain? Oh. It was in the middle of nowhere. It was, no, it was no in an airport nearby. No, it was in, no, it was in, a, it was in a town. Yeah. That um, they'd used to take out. Fringaro oh, no, Fringaro yeah, that, that was the nearest airport. It was Fringaro. Yeah. Joy's Bar that was in El Dorado. Yes. Trish yeah. Valentine used to work there behind the bar now and then mm. with the dog Mitzi, when she wasn't working in the video shop owned by Marcus Tandy. Now, of course, Joy worked there and then her <laughs> bad boyfriend Terry came out. This was after Corinne Hollingworth uh. took over as executive producer. <laughs> And uh, basically, uh, that was when it started to rate her. She got six million at the end, but then Alan Yentl came in. <laughs> uh, that was when it got... I feel as if I've had about five bottles of it. <laughs> That's enough soaps. It's not soap of the week. Oh, God. Right, All right. we have to vote now. No, this, don't. You, you, you have my third one yet. Please don't tell me it's a soap. Please, not no, a it soap. Isn't. But you can buy soap there in some oh, cases. Okay. Oh, okay. Clue. It is. It is uh, petrol stations in general, right? I'm not going to single out any one that particular one. That wasn't really one. a seamless link, was it? I mean, that was a bit. Well, you can buy soap in petrol I know, stations. I know, but that was a bit. Rubbish. Especially, you can even use soap in the petrol station toilet if you choose to go in them. But I wouldn't advise it. Um, are they gender neutral? Some of them are. Yeah. Sometimes there's only one. But you need a key usually. Right. Yeah, and they've yeah. got a wet floor. In case you want to stay mm. in there for a while. Mm. But no. Um, over the last week or so. The rising cost of petrol and mm. diesel has been absolutely nothing ludicrous. And lots of <laughs> petrol stations are doing it just off their own bat. They've taken delivery of a load of petrol, which they've paid a price for, every single day. Yeah. They're putting it up. Yeah. You know, they're adding another 5p or they're adding mm -hmm. another 20p. Mm -hmm. The highest that we found today uh, when I was talking on the radio was £2.12 for <gasps> a litre 
of petrol, of high octane, you know, the very most expensive mm. super petrol, super unleaded. Two pound twelve. I mean, I remember it was only about what just over a year ago. It was a pound. So, because I don't drive, how much would it then cost you to fill like the average? Well, the average car, car would then cost you about a hundred quid. Wow. Right, which, one which, one more, which used to cost say fifty. Wow. Yeah. It's just extraordinary. You know, and honestly, I don't know why nobody's doing anything about it. You know, you are Mike. Going, well, I am. You're standing yeah. up. I am for standing the great up for the ordinary motorist. man and woman. Yes. Well, do you know what? Recently, I was having a good old clear out of my back office at home, and. I found... Where's this going? No, and I found from when I was 17 an old petrol receipt. And you know you how much a receipt it cost? from when you were 17? Receipt. It was like all these papers that I oil had. And it was a petrol receipt. Do you know how much the petrol was? Seven pounds. 44 of P a litre. 44p a litre. Wow. And that was where they're going back probably 25, 26 years. Was it handwritten? Years. No, it was printed out. Car we had carved printers on tablets then. of stone. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't with the B.O. tapestry <laughs> at the end of it. <laughs> My shell receipt after William the Conqueror. Yeah. And 40, so just think it's gone up five times in 25 years. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot, does it? It is That's a lot. A crap story, that. It was crap. Yeah. yeah. It was Something not a crap 25 story. 25 years ago yeah. now costs five times sorry, as A much. Mars bar does not cost five times what it did 25 years I ago. I bet it does. I bet it doesn't. And they're a lot How smaller. much does it cost now? I don't like I don't Mars know. bars. Well, how much is a bar of chocolate? You I, can pay I, a pound for I don't one. know. I only go to the Fortnum and Mason. I bet they were 20p when you were 17. The Fortnum and Mason um, hand-picked bit is the only bit I go to All right. for chocolate. Anyway, we're out of time, so that's enough of your rubbish about chocolate <laughs> and comparisons. That's so bought for everyone. you good. were 17. I should have bought the receipt in. It would have been interesting. It would have been, been really, really, really interesting. Yeah, take a picture of it really, put it out to promote really the show. That would have been good. Anyway, let's find out oh. now who's going to win Plank of the Week. This is where we decide who's going to win it, right? Dawn, why don't you tell Christo what your three nominations are? <coughs> yeah. Right. We've got to rush through this as well. OK, all right. Hugh Grant. And no more soap stories. No, Hugh Grant. Yeah. Nicola Sturgeon. Yeah. And um, the Federation International Feline. Yes. The pussy lot. Um, I'm going to go for pussy. Pussy. Well, that's a first for the for first time ever. <laughs> why don't you give me your three? Uh, it was the bosses of Channel 10... Australia. Oh, yes. yeah. Justin Trudeau yeah. and Sadiq Khan. I think it's got to be Justin, isn't it? I'm going for Justin Trudeau. Yeah, yeah I'd agree. My three, uh, Martin Roberts, mm. Petrol Stations and mm. Sage. 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 I've always right. hated Sage. OK, oh, I've always yeah. hated it as well. So felines, or whatever their name is, as you call them. <sighs> Federation International Feline. Five. Federation Five. Federation. Where did he come from? Let's just call him Putin's pussy. Federation, Putin, Putin. Feline Federation, I'm going to call it. Yeah. Uh, Sage and Justin Trudeau, what do you think? Well, I mean, I would go for Justin Trudeau because I think he's a vile, awful hypocrite with floppy hair. Mm. I. That sounds good to me. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to have to. I'm going to agree Trudeau. with Christo. Oh, no. my God. If he was in Neighbours, all the better. Would you put... I'm going to um... disagree with Christo now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put... I'm going to nominate Sage as number two. Okay. But you might not like that because you like to. I like to win. And yeah. what's, wrong, what's wrong with a pussy? What do you think? Well, I, I mean, I think that. I'm say, sorry, I think uh, you've got a thing against pussies. No. Well, I, I just think, think a pussy is less substantial, which is many times a good thing. I mean, Sage have well, done an awful lot of harm. It. Sage have done an awful lot of harm. You, right? you picked pussy out of mine. Well, why did you choose my pussy? Well, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't want to choose anyone else's <laughs> ever. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily we come to the end Could of the show. Um, I'm going to put, <laughs> as, as, as a result of, so that you don't have to say the word anymore, uh, the Feline Federation I'm going to put in third place and Sage in second. We'll put Vladimir Putin in fourth, shall we? Yeah. He could and just Justin always Trudeau. linger, can't he? He's always going to be for a while. Trudeau and Putin while. are sort of hand in hand, really, aren't they? Well, that's probably not quite correct, but oh. I mean, I know what you, I know what you mean. Oh. So, anyway, thank you, Dawn. Okay. Thank you, Christo. Thank you. For all that superfluous soap information. Oh. But Justin Trudeau, welcome to Britain, your Plank of the Week. Yeah.